Welcome! In this video we are giving you a brief introduction into state channels. Scalability is one of the biggest challenges for blockchains and especially for smart contract platforms. When there are a lot of transactions on blockchains, the transactions become slow and expensive. And this is a big obstacle for mainstream adoption of blockchain-based dApps. One of the most promising scaling solutions are state channels. With state channels, users can directly interact with one another in the channel that is outside of the blockchain. We call that off-chain. Expensive and slow on-chain transactions are reduced to a minimum, only to synchronize the channel with the blockchain. Through this solution, transactions can be fast, cheap and private, while having blockchain-level security. Let's have a look at a real-world metaphor to have a better understanding of how state channels work. Every day after work, Alice is having a beer at the bar around the corner. She never has any cash. So she writes the bartender checks. The problem is, when the bartender cashes her check at the bank, she has to pay a fee of $2 per check. This becomes quite expensive for Alice. So she convinces the bartender to keep a tab for her. Every day she writes him a check with the amount she has to pay for the beer. But she adds to this amount the value of the check from the day before and then rips the old check apart. The bar owner now always has a valid check with Alice's current tab as a security and Alice only has to pay the fees once the bartender cashes the check at the bank. She and the bar can have multiple transactions while reducing the bank interactions and its fees to a minimum. Let's see how state channels work on Eternity. To make it easier we will use a payment channel without any state transitions as an example. Before opening a payment channel, Alice and Bob have to agree upon how many tokens they deposit into the channel. This amount is not final. They can later also withdraw or add more tokens to the channel. Let's say Alice deposits 50 tokens into the channel and Bob the bartender 0. They agree and sign a transaction that opens the channel. Initially Alice has 50 tokens and Bob 0, since that's what they deposit into the channel. Now Alice buys a beer for 10 tokens. And now we have a new state of the channel. We call it round 2. Similar to ripping the check apart, round number 1 became obsolete. And round number 2 now displays the token distribution inside the channel, after the most recent transaction. And Alice drinks another beer. Now Alice is an artist and while drinking beer she creates a beautiful painting that Bob wants to hang at the bar. So he buys it for 20 tokens. Alice drinks one more beer, is done for the night and wants to leave. Now there are two ways of how a channel can be closed. The first one is called a mutual close. Alice tells Bob that she wants to close the channel, Bob agrees and the channel gets closed. The new balances are transmitted to their accounts on the blockchain. The second way of closing a channel is called a solo close. So let's imagine Alice is already a bit drunk and wants to cheat Bob. She sets up a new transaction where she gets 10 tokens from Bob. Bob sees that and doesn't want to sign the transaction. Instead he doesn't want to do any more business with Alice. And he closes the channel. This is called a solo close. To close the channel Bob has to send the miner the current state of the channel. Now let's imagine that Bob wants revenge and thinks Alice is so drunk she won't notice anyway. So he submits an old round where he had more tokens into the solo close. After a solo close is posted, the other party still can dispute the final result until a specified time interval. So Alice submits some newer round with a proof called a slash. But there is still an even newer round that benefits Bob, so he submits it. When nobody presents any more slashes, a settlement transaction is produced. It gets mined, the tokens are added in the respective accounts and the channel is closed. State channels are behaving very similar to payment channels, but instead of a balance we have the state hash, the new state of a smart contract that is updated. Ok, what benefits do state channels have? One feature is privacy. The transactions that happen inside the channel are only known to the participating parties. Just the result is shared on the chain. This can be very interesting for businesses who don't want to share their customers data publicly for example. Instant transactions are another reason. In state channels messages can be exchanged instantaneously without having to wait for confirmations from the chain. Only the reaction time of the participants limits them. This could be very interesting for games for example. Imagine a game of poker and now instead of waiting 10 minutes after each hand, 
you can play without any delays. Lower costs are also a benefit of state channels. Costly on-chain transactions are limited to the creation and settlement of a channel. Inside the channel, participants can freely transact. This makes micropayments finally feasible. We could build a decentralized energy grid, where you can choose an energy source, open a channel and pay per kilowatt. Or a decentralized marketplace for internet connectivity, where you pay for bandwidth per kilobyte. But most importantly, because through state channels a lot of transactions can move off-chain, smart contract platforms can handle more transactions and don't get clocked up and can scale. Special about state channels on Eternity is that they are built right into the Eternity protocol. They are first-class objects. This makes it very easy for developers to use them and they don't have to rely on any third-party solutions where security could be compromised. With native state channels, Eternity enables mass developer adoption of this promising scaling solution, combating one of blockchain's biggest obstacles. In the next video, we will see how blockchain oracles can help to bring real-world information on the blockchain.